that's enough. I think this is enough right here. Almost two. I didn't quite make it all the way as three inches and measure it, but you guys remember from the earlier tutorials, these are our, these are our rulers which tell us so we would have started over here, right? Half to two, and then we would have came down, and this would have been one. Then we would have came down, and that would have been two. And then, well, actually, that would have been three. Okay, so it was three. And then what I'm going to do after I finish making it um, three inches three inches tall, I'm going to make it about four inches wide. So again, starting over here, you guys can see this is zero, and then we go one, two, three, and about four. So it's already got its four inch wide, which means it's matching the table pretty closely. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in some HTML inside of it. Once again, because we've got beautiful tutorials that have it all coded for us, we can come right down and copy and paste it. There's our HTML right over there. Did a control C. I could have also hit the copy button. It's your preference. And then come down right over there and paste it. There we go. Now that's actually got my HTML right over there. So I've got HTML text now at this stage. H4, limitations, you name it, whatever else. And what they're talking about is the fact that you've actually got HTML here. Now this is pretty cool. So this is an HTML fragment. Notice that. So you mean you can use HTML to style up your pages and whatever else, or you can use you know HTML to be able to add elements? Yep. And within HTML5, where you've got a particular collection of rich elements, right, um, this can become extremely beneficial adding you know movies and things like that and you name it and streaming you things right there into the report yes you can yes you can and that opens the world for us okay but what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to select all the text in this text box first because even though it's like this it still doesn't know that it's html ssrs doesn't know we have to tell HT ssrs that this is in fact html over here so i'm gonna i'm going to right click on it at this point and then i'm going to click on text properties now on the general tab i'm going to tell it to html which means up oh, recognize this is html cool 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 and hit okay now it knows that this is html at this particular stage so now we've got html over there inside of there and what you guys will see is now that we've got html i can go ahead and click run and look at that bullet bulleted list respecting the html wow Wow, very significant, guys. One of the probably the probably what I liked most about this lecture was this section right here because now this opens up the door for us to be able to to be able to format our reports in any way that we like. The fact that we can add XML or HTML means means that we can take complete control over the over the real estate of the web page. That is significant. And not only that, but just think about this for a second. Say you're a business user who's who, who's never used HTML, okay? Even if someone's never ever used HTML, I mean, even if they haven't even touched it, uh, they could still use one of the free HTML editors or choose an HTML editor. Now, for those of you using SharePoint, which we're doing these things in SharePoint, SharePoint's got a great one, SharePoint Designer. But right over here, um, if you go into Google and just simply search WYSI, WYG HTML editors, you'll get a ton of them at different costs depending upon what they do that will generate HTML for you. These are just some of the free ones that I was clicking on just to take a look at them when I did a search right before. And I mean a ton of them over here. Now, granted, SharePoint Designer is better than these free ones, but um, still, the point is, it's not very difficult to be able to get HTML generated. So this is very beneficial in the sense that you've got all these free editors just available where you can essentially go in and you can write things up. And then after you finish writing things inside of them, depending upon how they work or whatever else, um, you can then, you know, turn around, write things inside of them, and then watch it get generated into real HTML. All right, please generate HTML for me. Click on the source, for example, over here, and then there's some HTML that I could copy and paste. You would do, you would do it right inside of the body, by the way. And like I said, tons of things you can use, including SharePoint, that get the job done and get the job done extremely well. Okay. So very handy section that we just learned over there. Uh, one last thing to do in order to clean this up. And guys, we are all finished with this particular um, demonstration. So this was a lot shorter than the, than the other ones. Um, some of them are going to go by pretty quick. Some of them take a while, depending upon what they're covering. All right. Now, what we're going to do last is we just need to format this report and make it look stylish and then upload it. So let me just click over here. There we go. And let me click design. And we want to change, by the way, before I click design, we want to change sales over here. So we want sales to look a lot better. 
Um, we want to see it formatted at least so that way it's a, it's a currency essentially for us. And once we get that, we're done. We've done this in every other section. So I'm going to click design, highlight some cells coming right over. And, and I'm going to hold down on shift and highlight all three of those particular rows. Then I'm going to, then, then, then once I finish doing that, I'm going to click on the currency button right over there. And this time, just to add a little, a little, you know, extra part to it, um, right now our default look, when I come over here to normal, notice how it's got two decimals. <clears throat> I'm going to remove those two decimals in this particular case. And so you could remove them over here just by clicking down and going, and going down to zero. But instead of doing that, I'm going to show you another way to do it, just so you can see another way, that's all. So what I'm going to do is coming back to our number right over here. I'm going to come over here and notice that there's this little increase decimal and then decrease decimal over whatever is selected. I'm going to decrease the decimal one, decrease the decimal again. Now it, black, now it fades out in the gray because I can't decrease the decimals anymore because there are no decimals. Now let me click run. And you guys can see those are the values without decimals now. So you guys see, once again, multiple different ways to do something, but very handy. So it's, it's, it's really the answer is it's your preferred way as far as on how you're going to do this. Okay, all done with that. Last step, save it. Save it to your SharePoint server or to wherever else you're going to save it at. BrandonDemos.com. There we go. There are my classic reports. And I'll call this freeform list. And I will click save. There we go. And now, final step, once it's actually all saved in there, right now it's making its connection. Give it just a moment. I did notice, and I mean, granted, I'm, granted I'm, on my, I'm, I'm on my own machine, but I did notice that the saving mechanism now is a lot faster and the performance is a lot, a lot better with 2013. And there's some architectural reasons for that, but I do like SharePoint 2013's um, architectural performance with, um, with, with, with you know, SSRS a lot better now that they've actually embedded the SSRS um, database directly into, directly into SharePoint. That's definitely made a huge difference in performance. I didn't think it would, but quite significant. Okay, so I'm going to come over here now, and I'm going to click on this. Just refresh the page. There we go. There's our, there's our actual lab right over there. So I think, did I call it, I didn't call it list lab. What did I call it? Freeform list report. There we go. So got it now. So there's freeform list report, and I'm going to click on this. let it come up inside the browser and voila we are all finished so guys thank you again for having gone through another presentation with me i've promised we're going to completely take this thing from beginning to to, to the very end of power view before i before i end this series so there are more parts to come hope you guys like it loving teaching it and um thank you very much for having um thank you very much for having attended this particular session